Hello, welcome to another video on Game Master 5. Uh, today I'm going to show you how to run the Initiative Tracker, uh, the Combat Encounter Management piece of Game Master 5. And I'm just going to run through the uh, Goblin Ambush uh, from Lost Mine of Fandelver that I have set up here and uh, show you how it goes. Now, I created this campaign without characters initially, so I've added those in. So I'm going to first thing I'm going to do is when I go into this encounter, you'll notice that I don't have any player characters. Uh, fortunately, that's pretty easy to remedy. Go in, I can add a new character just like that. I'm going to add in another. And now I have um, two fairly advanced characters in here. So um, we'll just go with that and see what see how it looks. Um, if I go back, it'll basically give me an idea of the difficulty by the icon on the left. The, uh, this should be easy for two, five, or six level characters. I think they're sixth, fifth. Okay. Um, so here, I'm going to use the dice roller for a lot of this just because it's easier. Um, but obviously, we would be rolling dice in most situations. So uh, first thing I'd do is I'd go and I'd roll initiative, and it'll automatically sort through uh, the initiative for the the monsters. Now you notice that it didn't group them; it separated them out. Um, that's something I can manually change if I want to. Uh, in this case, I'm going to go in and set Erlen, and we're just going to uh, auto roll him. And then I'll do Mavis and auto roll her. Um, so, ooh, terrible. All right, so as the campaign goes, I'm not going to deal with any surprise. You can manage that pretty straightforward. Uh, but once I have my initiative all set, I can just hit start. And now you'll see I have my list of characters, my round. Uh, hit points, their armor class, uh, and this is where it's important to keep your player characters and NPCs up to date in the app um, so that that information you don't have to keep asking uh, your players. So um, in this case there's a lot of different ways this can be played. Obviously you're, you're going to tend to do it the same way uh, most people do and that's you roll dice and tell you what the, the results are. Uh, in this case I'll just use the dice roller just so that we can kind of play around with it. So let's say the uh, Erlen's first attack is with range, and he... 21, I think that hits. So then I can switch this automatically to the damage for his longbow, and he does five points of damage. So let's just put that on goblin number three. I can take five points off, and he's looking pretty rough. Um, so then, you know, right off the bat, I can just... Go to Goblin 2, and then same thing. Let's say he gets close enough and he can, or he's going to make a short bow attack. Let's make it straightforward. Uh, 13 does not hit. So we move on to Goblin number 1. Also makes a short bow attack. 14 <laughs> does not hit. And this is why they're not level 1 characters. Um, so. <laughs> Moving right along, but we're in the last one, and let's say he's closed the distance, and he does hit. Let's say he was going after Earl in there. Switch the damage, roll seven points. Yeah, I think he's going to be fine. Uh, <laughs> but you can see it's pretty easy to handle as far as your NPCs go, even where they're split out, even in larger camp, uh, larger. Um, combat encounters with lots of, of NPCs and creatures, it really makes it easy to keep track of. Um, so again, we'll say Goblin number two makes his scimitar attack and he misses. So that brings up Mavis, and let's say that she also is at range. So she makes a longer attack, misses. All right, I'm not going to go through every round, uh, but as you can basically see, as you take down opponents, it shows that they're dead. So if I go to Goblin 3, um, his stats still remain, but he's got the little skull icon you can see up to his name. So it's just a nice little reminder. It's also, of course, updated on the left. Um, and as you go through and take out combatants, it continues to do that. And, of course, you have the same issue with players. If you kill off a player, um, they're also killed off in this case and taken out of combat. Uh, unless, for some reason, they are 
revive. That's one heck of a potion. Um, so as you can see, it's pretty straightforward. There's uh, a couple of other things you can do in here. I could have had notes as to environment or treasure uh, that is part and parcel to this encounter. Uh, and of course, I can also get to others, various, the compendium, rules reference. Uh, I can edit the encounter if I realize I need to A, add a combatant or remove a combatant for some, whatever reason. Uh, and then I can also restart and say, okay, I, just kidding, that really didn't happen. Uh, and then we're back to where we were. Uh, you do notice that the initiative is, is wiped out as well. So um, all in all, it's a great tool and probably the, the biggest reason I've switched to Game Master 5 uh, for all my campaigns. Uh, I used to use Cobalt Fight Club, um, which is a web app, an exceptional web app, um, but I didn't always have Wi-Fi access and it was nice to have it, uh, this right here. I don't know if I'm this in early because they're not actually in that campaign. Um, but as you can see, it's pretty straightforward. It's a really nice uh, interface. And if I go to say, let me show like uh, spider web and you know, some of these encounters, you know, they're, they're much, that's a bad example. I think work camp is another one. And it's got a few combatants. So again, if I run initiative, um, I could still choose to do all the orcs at once if I wanted. Um, it really depends on your preference. I kind of like doing them individually. I think it's it's more fun, but sometimes it really slows down combat, so I just gotta do it all at once. Um, but that's pretty much all there is to see here, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe, and uh, come back for more. Thank you, have a good one.